Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my AM reading video for Friday, June 5th, 2020. I'm making this relatively late in the day, hoping to uh, outrun a thunderstorm, perhaps. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot of videos lately, a cropping of videos on BookTube, uh, from people like Steve Donahue and Sean from Sean the Book Maniac, uh, Mercedes at Mercy's Musings, Sabrina at Bookish Sabrina, I'm sure there's been other people as well, uh, talking about uh, what we're owed uh, to talk about during these times when uh, the news has been so dire and uh, we've seen not only in America uh, continued police brutality against uh, black people, but also uh, protests and uh, unrest and uh, even more brutal pushback from police and uh, some very disquieting, to put it lightly, words from uh, President Trump. I always worry about being too performative, uh, although I have been incredibly uh, heartened to see that uh, throughout social media there seems to have been a bigger push on most platforms, and including this one, to talk about these things and to uh, relay Black Lives Matter, um, and to get the message out there that this is going to be a common refrain and uh, hopefully something that uh, people who want to look away from this will have a harder and harder time doing so. And that the world around them at least will be saying we must confront this reality. I've also been very fortunate uh, in my reading of the Book 2 Prize that uh, in the last round, the quarterfinals that I judged, uh, my nonfiction group uh, was very heavily uh, influenced by issues of, issues of uh, racial inequality in America, and I thought I would uh, particularly highlight uh, Charged by Emily Bazelon, which is about uh, the movement to reform uh, part of the criminal justice system, particularly having to do with prosecutors, people who have an incredible amount of power when it comes to uh, criminals, perpetrators, uh, who come before them having uh, committed uh, crimes that in the past would be met with draconian action and continue to be uh, given our mass incarceration rate in uh, the U.S. Uh, but this book talked about reform methods that some DAs are, are trying to implement about uh, funneling more money into uh, diversionary programs for mental health and for drug rehabilitation and other means. Uh, and it was on my mind, and I was very fortunate that I read this book shortly before submitting my primary ballot for uh, Maryland state elections. Uh, and uh, that did influence me a lot to uh, look at some of the people running for office. Uh, I had some people running for uh, my circuit court, and I had some people running for the education board, and I uh, wanted to go ahead and uh, do due diligence on these people and their platforms, and I found some uh, interviews, and I particularly wanted to pay attention to what they were saying about these diversionary programs that I had just uh, learned a fair bit more about, and about uh, the type of language they would use about uh, putting money into these sorts of programs rather than uh, rather than uh, the old school just lock them up sort of stuff. Uh, and within, with regards to schools, uh, you know, language uh, regarding uh, diversity of teachers and uh, making sure that uh, black and Latinx children have uh, access to uh, ed the education that they need. So uh, I'm fortunate for this and it makes me think too that particularly within liberal society, I don't think we focus a lot on uh, local elections. It's something I particularly heard after the Trump election, of all things, uh, that uh, it's the uh, conservative voters who go and uh, make their voices heard in uh, local areas. And uh, we, uh, most of America has now, uh, most if not all of America now has now voted in the primaries and we have, you know, the big election in November and of course we're all focused on a very specific part of that. But I think it behooves us to remember that we do have power uh, within local elections uh, to deal with issues like this and to hopefully get people uh, into office that uh, will 
relay these values. So I'm very fortunate and I will link my booktube prize video down below because I talk about this book and other books having to deal with uh, racial issues in the U.S. and uh, other books as well. This is usually the part of the video these last couple of months where I say I'm going to ignore all of my reading the month before, and I certainly will do that for the most part. Uh, my May 2020 literary newsletter is linked down below where I have snippets of Goodreads reviews, other news that has caught my fancy in the literary world, uh, book pick and a book meme, and etc. So you can see that all down below. I have been, I think, in a little bit of a slump since uh, finishing my final book, uh, technically, of uh, May, which was A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which uh, I loved, unsurprisingly, and I do think it discusses uh, pretty important themes, uh, and I imagine I will be talking about them later down the line, because uh, at the end of June, I will probably, or intend to be, posting my mid-year check-in video. <laughs> But that being said, I do want to continue trucking along with more reading in June, and I feel fortunate again that uh, I'm picking up this book, uh, The Beautiful Things That Heaven Bears by Danao Mengestu, uh, because it would seem like this was the sort of book that I might uh, be purposefully picking up because of uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, supporting issues. And that certainly does weigh heavily on my mind as I, as I read this book or start to read this book very early stages so far. But in truth, I was going to pick it up anyway because um, I got this last September as part of Uncensored DC. It's a uh, banned book scavenger hunt put on by the DC Public Library annually uh, where they uh, pick six titles uh, that have been banned in certain situations. Damn, I just uh, left uh, the camera for a bit because my mother called just then. Uh, and now uh, the storm is in earnest. There's a lot of rain and I can hear some rumbling, but I guess I will try to go on and finish this. Uh, where was I? <laughs> uh, I was talking about this book uh, and I'm just in the very beginning stages of it. And uh, the themes of this book have to do um, with gentrification in DC. Uh, gentrification and uh, sort of keeping uh, minority communities uh, alive uh, was a big uh, theme in Uncensored DC uh, last year. Uh, and this one has to do uh, with an Ethi it's Ethiopian immigrant. I think it's a little bit uh, autobiographical to a certain extent. The uh, main character owns a grocery store in a predominantly black neighborhood but you know the uh but the demographics are shifting and uh it seems like he is going to befriend um a white character and her biracial daughter and there might be a little bit of violence that's all kind of teased in the back uh so i do think this is a little on par with um the issues that are happening right now with regards to uh to black lives really uh because of uh, the realities of life in a lot of inner cities, and especially in D.C. That's what I know about the most about uh, D.C. focusing on these issues of gentrification versus uh, keeping uh, the diverse neighborhoods alive and afloat and keeping uh, the diverse people in the areas alive and afloat and not, you know, kicked out by prices or anything else. Uh, and this morning, in fact, uh, the senior members of my clergy uh, went uh, to a historic black uh, church with a bunch of members of an organization they're part of, which is the Washington Interfaith Network, and uh, they gave a talk that covered all of these issues. It covered uh, the police violence and the murders of people like George Floyd, and it also uh, covered uh, how they are banding together to make sure that uh, spaces for development are there for the people and not for developers and to make sure that uh, the diverse people, especially the black and brown people who live in DC, can still remain there in this uh, their home. Uh, so it was uh, moving uh, and uh, important to these times, so I'll link that video down below and I will be back to talk about uh, this book once I finish it. And I guess I'll bring in that brief caveat that I feel this connection to D.C. I, I work in D.C. My synagogue is in D.C. I don't live in D.C., so I uh, do inhabit a strange uh, space. It's uh, 
city that I care about, the city that I care about the most now is, is uh, D.C. and of course also Montgomery County where I live. And uh, I'm very uh, happy that uh, my rabbis took part in this and that in fact uh, one of my rabbis, Rabbi Aaron Alexander, uh, gave uh, a prayer at the beginning of uh, the video. And another issue that is uh, somewhat adjacent to things I've been talking about is the issue of immigration in America, uh, another highly charged uh, political issue or perhaps politicized issue uh, about uh, whether or not people uh, belong here or uh, if we should welcome them in as our new neighbors and friends. Uh, and I'm just using this as a preamble to say that the next book I am hoping to read is Passage West by Rishi Reddy, which I was hoping would uh, come to uh, my my holds list uh, now, but uh, in fact uh, I'm still waiting for it. It says available soon, but I don't have it just yet. But this is a debut novel by Rishi Reddy, and it is about uh, Indian sharecroppers, uh, I think in the 30s. Uh, I put it on my most anticipated releases of the year list that I made in uh, January, that video. Uh, and a major reason I wanted to read this book is because just by circumstance, uh, serendipitously, uh, 10 years ago, I was just shopping around uh, in a Barnes & Noble and I found her uh, collection of short stories, I think even in a discount box. And I just thought that uh, they looked really interesting and I liked them. And out of the blue, uh, 10 years later, here she is uh, publishing her debut novel. And I uh, hope it is good, and I hope I can bring some good attention to it on BookTube. So that about covers it for me now. It seems like I've been lucky so far. I don't think there's been any thunder <laughs> booming in the distance. Uh, but I will be back uh, later in the week. Uh, I have a plan to wrap up uh, my Maybe Made Rush Readathon, uh, which is something I partook in uh, last month, a BookTube-created uh, readathon to read books uh, pertaining to uh, any world religion, and I've read a fiction and nonfiction book based on Judaism, and I want to tease some themes out of both of those books and talk about it a bit. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe, uh, and I will see you next time.